Thank you. I'm very honored and excited to be here. Um, as my uh, lovely MCs said, I was born in the first waves of what's usually called Gen Y. We're also called the Millennials, uh, or the Echo Boom, or my personal favorite, the Trophy Generation. Um, around the time that I finished uh, university a few years ago, there was a lot of talk beginning about my generation. Um, a lot of people were writing about what and who is Gen Y, what's wrong with Gen Y, why can't Gen Y get its act together, how did Gen Y end up with this or this way, et cetera, et cetera. And it was a strange moment for me when I realized, as I read more of this, that I was a generational cliché. And what I mean by that is I graduated from a prestigious university with a decent GPA. Um, I had big dreams of doing good and important work in the world, but there I was a few years later with a fairly significant student loan debt, working for minimum wage in coffee shops, um, basically feeling uh, no direction, no purpose, not a lot of hope. Um, and while living in a couple of different cities, I observed this phenomenon playing out uh, in most of the people that I knew. Uh, my peers were all well-educated, critically thinking, passionate people, um, living in this time when we were supposed to have the capacity to pursue any option that we wanted, but most of us seemed unable or unwilling to do so. And while this painted a somewhat grim picture, it was also kind of comforting. Um, I had this whole cohort of companions who were uh, experiencing this sudden onset of uncertainty and inertia, and um, I was starting to um, feel like it wasn't just some personal failing of mine that I was where I was in my life, but there had to be something larger at work that was exerting its force on us. And I started to think that we are not lost, we are just stuck in a state of generational puberty, too learned and grown to be children, but without the power over our destiny like those who have reached the age of majority, we have been denied entry into adulthood because all the spots were taken long before we even arrived at the doors. So we cultivate our culture of perpetual youth, let our diplomas gather dust and become experts instead on late night city streets, serve coffee over counters like we did when we were teenagers, move back to our childhood bedrooms and wait for the future to arrive because the one that we were promised was not the one that was delivered. And we've heard it said that our dreams were too naive, our expectations too lofty, our sense of worth too grand, our hope too entitled. But you can't blame us for all our big ideas. We were raised by children of the post-war years who told us that we could do anything. And why wouldn't we believe it? We know from our story, the stories of our parents and from the history books, from the Million Man Marches, from Berkeley and Birmingham and Broadburners, from, our slo from the slogans on placards that had the force of a thousand fists that everything can change for the better in a decade if enough people will it. So I'm not here to blame you either, dear parents, for giving us too much hope. Thank you for your undying conviction in the power of our agency. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for telling me I could be whatever I wanted. It was not so much a great lie as a great promise, as you two were dreaming of a different world. Nor am I here to blame you for telling us too often that we were special. The critics have discredited our participation ribbons and our thanks for coming out medals, saying that this has softened our hides to be too tender to the beatings of the real world. But you taught us that in the real world, nothing is fixed, and that the structures built by those that came before us are just human creations, fallible as the human minds that designed them, and that it is not the job of the youth to bend around their flawed corners or harden to their crumbling edges, but to know when their foundations are unsound and when to leave them in vacant lots to rot. And we have been set free from the institutions of learning with too much vision and too much knowledge, too able to see the cracks in this city's streets, yet forced to walk upon its floundering mass, heaving and shifting and buckling under the weight of our forebears' folly, and you wonder why we can't get our footing. So we stand still, and we wait. Not for the perfect husband or the perfect wife, the dream home or the dream car, or the pioneer dream, but for the chance to mold this world with our own muscled hands not yet calloused from working, but made of all the sinews required for labor, for building, for pounding this steaming world melted by its own hot tempers into a shape that we recognize. And it will take an act of great creative courage to make our lives from scratch. So do not condemn us with your cynicism. It is just a license for complacency. And call us instead Generation TBA, ETA pending, but certainly imminent, because we are a generation that will have greatness thrust upon us. When the chairs in the front row are finally empty and we can leave our spot in the cheap seats, we will become truly grown. 
This is no great uprising. It is the passing of time and the cleaning out of attics of that which we no longer need and can no longer use. This is tectonic movement beneath our feet because change is not always momentous, but a slow crashing, a slow pushing upwards, an assertion of nascent buried potential into something massive, something Himalayan, that will change the landscape forever. And this doesn't mean I'm never afraid of the future that will be ours to orchestrate. No, my parents taught me well, sometimes too well, telling me early of the truth of humanity's long march of tragedy, of napalm and gas chambers and witch trials long before the school books ever cracked open to reveal the extraordinary ways in which we've hurt each other. I learned young that our every joy is balanced with some sorrow, and our creativity is imbued with destructive potential. And like those who raised us, we live with the threat of imminent doom, but this time we play a game of brinkmanship with the earth, not just the bomb. And ever since I was young, I've been dreaming at night of ice ages and earthquakes, of fission and fallout. And on my less than better days, I think of these things. And on my less than better days, I think it's too late. That progress has made a haze so thick and viscous that we will never clear the air. And some days I think of giving up. I know a few things about wanting to give up. But I know a few things about not giving up. Because I'm still here. And it's got something to do with trust in our shapely minds and our strong young legs not yet tired from walking a lifetime. I know our apathy is not self-generated. Our hopelessness is not warranted. My hopefulness is not foolhearted. Because we are not in the end times. We are in the in-between times. And we are not an echo. We are the first words. Thank you. <laughs>